Hey everyone. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. It's not quite the same introduction with Dash Music as Richard got, but it's not too bad. Uh, so yeah, my name is, is David Pollard. Uh, I, as Richard said, I'm the co-organizer of Startup Week Dublin, which I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, and about building up communities and the importance of that within the entrepreneurship and startup ecosystem. Um, as we heard there as well, I'm the founder of Learning Tech Labs, which was my very first community that we set up here in Dublin. We have about 3,500 members, and it's all about supporting people in the educational technology industry to have a look at challenges that are there and to come up with solutions to that. Uh, and my 9 to 5 job, while I'm not doing some of the other things, um, the one I get <laughs> paid for is Innovation Projects Manager for the Rehab Group. And what that involves is uh, supporting people with disabilities, both physical, uh, intellectual and uh, sensory disabilities, to be able to live uh, more independent lives through technology and through um, supporting them to be able to create, challenges or create solutions to their own challenges. Uh, so, for example, one of the people that I work with, uh, Lisa, she has um, trouble um, and some challenges uh, around mobility. Uh, and what we've done is we've looked at creating environments, such as rooms, that she's able to control using uh, her eyes. And we had a really interesting story the other day about uh, she made her first call to the centre and said, uh, you don't have to come in until 10 o'clock because I'm not going to be there. And her mum rang an hour later and said, look, just to let you know, Lisa's going to be in late. And uh, the centre said, yeah, we know, Lisa's already called us. And that's something that's really exciting. And you'll see that we've tried to, to bring in that inclusion uh, throughout uh, our communities. So, a little bit about me. My lifetime awards are currently at zero. Um, and I think they're going to stay there because I have never won anything in my entire life. Um, and who am I? Well, I was a builder for about five years. I was in construction and a lot of people say, oh, you're an engineer. And I was like, nope, I was a builder. I was putting blocks one on top of the other. Uh, this is one of the, the buildings that we worked on and we actually looked at um, how to renovate it in the old style. And this is one of the rooms that I worked on. Um, and uh, we're quite proud of it, but it was my first taste of inclusion because we were building ramps up to the doors for people with disabilities to get in. But what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today is really building up communities. And um, I think even just by looking at the people here in the room and the amount uh, of, of students that are here and industry experts, uh, we can see that there's a real desire to, to come together. And I know some of the students maybe be forced here by some of their project managers and some of their lecturers. But their desire to, to, to be together and to work together and to try and create something that's exciting. So, how, do, how did I start initially? Well, I looked at just trying to immerse myself into a, a new area because after building, I went back and I studied a master's in learning and teaching. And I really wanted to learn about it because I didn't have a clue when I went into my first lectures what any of the words were. I didn't know what pedagogy went, meant. It was the art of teaching and learning. And it took me about four weeks to figure that out. So what I did was I set up Learning Tech Labs, this community. Um, of around education and supporting entrepreneurs in that space. And we run really, really small events. And these happened every month. And then it happened again and again. And little by little, I was immersing myself into this space and learning about it. And it was a start. And it led to, to a little bit more, as we'll see. I then started to work on hackathons, and I know that a lot of um, the students that are working on some of the business courses uh, have been involved with it. Uh, Emily O'Gorman and Chloe Healy have been some of those. Uh, and we've run hackathons around accessibility with Google. And we've looked at the city of Dublin, looked at the challenges that are there, similar to the challenges that Lisa may have had, and gone, how can we actually start to fix these? And how can we engage the community? of people who have disabilities with uh, the rest of the community, people who are engineers and business people, and really start to bring that together to create solutions. And not just solutions, but then to be able to create sustainable businesses out of the uh, end of that. So this is one of the hackathons that we did. Um, and it was exciting to see some of the different projects that came out of it, such as looking at the hardware of supporting people to move between uh, a car and to get into a house. Um, they might need to use a board, and people have started to look at the designs of these, trying to change them, adapt them, but also to make them more appealing to use. So rather than just being a piece of equipment, that um, it, they're actually uh, not just practical, but also uh, better to look at and, and more appealing. So in order to do that, and in order to like, start to boost that reach, we started to use uh, Twitter, which we've heard about, and some of the other social medias. And 
these are the results of an hour of uh, one of our Twitter chats that uh, I was part of called Access Chat. And after an hour, we, got, we were talking about accessibility, entrepreneurship, and how to make a change. And we got um, over, this was taken about 10 minutes afterwards, and we got about 57 million reach uh, globally. And this was really important to us because in order to make an impact here in Ireland, we also need to be able to showcase what we're doing uh, to the wider global population and to try and bring them in and encourage them to see Dublin, to see Ireland as truly uh, an inclusive and open ecosystem that's not just doing things, but is willing to share those ideas and to be willing to ask for, for advice and opinions on that. And it was really exciting to, to, to see the results of this. Um, and, and from that, we were able to, to ask people from around the world to get engaged with some of the, the projects that we were doing and to really have a community that wasn't just based here, but was also open to, to people outside of, of the country. Um, I don't know if anyone has taken part in the Startup Weekend, uh, but I know that one or two uh, from uh, Roisin Lines' class has definitely been part of it and have volunteered to be part of it. But to give you a, a kind of an idea of what this is, it's basically three days, on the Friday, you come in and you pitch your idea, a brand new idea about what your business is going to be. Then on the Saturday, we provide you with mentors and supports to be able to, to try and bring, bring that idea and bring it more grounded and, and make it more concrete. And then on the Saturday, we put up a line of judges and we support you uh, and, and give you feedback on that. And then hopefully that idea, that business idea can be taken forward. And I know there are some projects and some of these events that are coming up in the next month here in DCU. And I really encourage you to, to be part of that. I know Deborah Summerin is running one, uh, which would be great to, to get involved with. We also have a migrant edition, uh, which is coming up in Udemy um, next month as well. Uh, so it'll be great to have you involved within that. And we really looked at that and we said, well, what are some of the challenges there in, in that migrant community? So what we've done is we've opened up uh, free spaces for anyone who's in direct provision to ensure that they're engaged with those challenges as well. Uh, because we feel that whoever uh, is, is feeling those challenges most and is in their lives, well, they're the ones that are able to really provide the answers. And hopefully we can help facilitate that. So these are some of the communities that we've, we've been part of. They were really exciting to, to, to be part of. And I've kind of, I suppose, uh, done them and now we're stepping away from them uh, and uh, sitting back a lot of the people who've run these events are now working kind of on uh, volunteer advisory boards with other event organizers because we feel that it's really important that the next generation comes up um, and takes the mantle and, and kind of goes for it and, and, and gives uh, a little something from, from what they have, that energy that you have, that you may have these ideas around maybe a startup weekend that you'd like to run on a specific theme, whether it's sustainability or whatever it might be, um, but you're not too sure how to do it, like please uh, reach out to us and, and we'll help you in the best way possible to make something like that a, a reality. And then with these communities, we want to keep this momentum going. So I've been doing this for the last maybe three or four years, and it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I've ended up traveling all around the world, working with uh, the King of Saudi Arabia to ensure that we're looking at inclusion there and the community that's there. We've traveled um, to different places around Europe, and it's really, really exciting to see that people are starting to, to realize that there's an importance here of connecting um, communities on a global, global scale. And these are some of the events that we run for Startup Week, which I'll, I'll chat to you a little bit about now. We did a speed mentoring for female immigrant entrepreneurs. We looked at avoiding burnout. And one of the interesting areas that we looked at as well was a thing called Startability, which was around supporting people with disabilities to become entrepreneurs. And again, we were doing this truly by looking at a community, bringing people together, uh, and asking them, can you work together on challenges uh, and really see if we can, can uh, come together as a community to create something that not only has good potential, but is sustainable in the long term. So we ran a thing called Startup Week, and I think we've got a quick video that I can show after this, but you can follow on this hashtag. Um, I don't think it's going to come up. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter, because I'll keep talking. And this event looked at 54 events, and we did it over 32 venues here in Dublin, and we had 115 speakers. This happened in November, and the whole purpose of this was looking at entrepreneurship and celebrating communities of entrepreneurs and community builders that are here in the city. Now, this is something that can be done in different cities around uh, Ireland, and we hope that other people, maybe even somebody here, will take that on board and say, well, maybe I can do that back in my own city. 
but we did it here in Dublin, and we looked at kind of this timeline. We decided that we really want to make this happen. But we thought about it um, about 10 weeks before we ran it. So we had 10 weeks to organize this event, and we ended up having over 3,500, again, uh, attendees who participated and came to our events, which was quite a lot. Uh, we had initially anticipated that we would only do 30 events, and that just started to increase and increase uh, with people like Enterprise Ireland and others getting involved with that, which was super exciting. So we started off at our town hall in the city hall, the Lord Mayor came along and we, we kind of just said, hey, this is what we'd love to achieve. We'd love to celebrate um, you as a community and the things that you're doing for all 12 months of the year. We have a week and we want to showcase that. And we want to provide a space where people who maybe want to set up a business first and foremost can come along and hopefully get the support and that boost to be able to do that. And then maybe other people who maybe don't want to set up their own business, even just yet, but they want to join a high growth company, well, this can be for you as well. And then there's other people who are community leaders and community uh, supporters, people like uh, Anya Malloy from Girl Crew and others who are really making waves here in Ireland and not just here, but globally. Uh, but we want to, to, to put everyone up and say, hey, this is Dublin. This is Ireland, uh, and this is what you can achieve and be that real uh, pinnacle of, of what uh, communities look like. So we did that, and then we got to October, and we launched our full site, and it was only a month away from the event itself, so it was pretty hectic. We weren't too sure would anyone be interested, and then suddenly tons and tons of emails came through, and we got so many people who just wanted to take part, to volunteer, and we actually... Um, we got a lot of volunteers and support from, from DCU and from others. And then we ran it, and it was, it was really exciting. Um, the rating at the, at the end of it was 9.5 out of 10 uh, from, all the uh, from all the people who participated. And we could really see there was um, this sense of community, that people were really excited just to be part of this, and they were asking, can we come back? And what was, what was nice for us as well, that there were people who came to Ireland that week who had never uh, heard about Dublin Startup Week because, to be honest, it was quite new. But they said that they wanted to set up in Ireland just based on the information and the supports that they got during that week. And have come back and have worked with the local enterprise office and Dublin City Council. And that's been really exciting to see that this is actually making a positive impact. So, again, it was sponsored by the Dublin City Council. And these are some of the ecosystem supporters, and maybe you can spot yourself there. I know DCU uh, definitely supported us, which was really, really uh, great to see. Uh, but other universities did as well. Um, us two Learning Tech Labs, the local enterprise office, uh, Women Who Code, uh, Mind Over Matter, Irish Tech, there's so many. Um, and it was, it was brilliant. And again, you can see that there's a community there, but these are not everyone in Dublin. And hopefully next year we can bring in more people as well. So I say we did it. And I mean that, because it was we. We had track captains, we had five tracks, and we looked at design, development, uh, we had our diversity inclusion track, our future track, and entrepreneurship 101. And each one of these people volunteered their time for free. Uh, to give you kind of a, a sense of, of those people, they're, they're people who are doers. Uh, Colin is one of Forbes' 30 under 30s. Kim Mackenzie Doyle uh, was the former director of the Irish Design Institute but there are people who really knew the area, and we really value that. We want people who not only are the best at what they do, but they're also the nicest at what they do as well. They're people who really value their own communities, and they can give you a sense of, okay, this would be someone who would really support people to, to uh, work in design and, and get into that area. And that was important to us, because we didn't just want uh, the best people, but then that they wouldn't cultivate the, the sense of, of community that we wanted. So it, it was really exciting, and Natalie flew in from Scotland on her own uh, and, and just wanted to support us for the week. So it was great to have her involved. And Roisin Lines, over there trying to hide in the corner, is our new education track captain. So can I get a round of applause, please, for our newest captain? <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, yeah, she told me not to do that, which is exactly why I did it. So I'm just going to keep that up for one more second, and then you're okay now. You're fine. Uh, we have an advisory group, uh, which includes uh, Brian Caulfield, David Tighe from the Bank of Ireland. And again, you can see that the importance of, of having such a, a massive community. And I apologize if I'm sniffing into this mic. I have a really bad man flu. So this is the slide uh, that I usually read out and just list everyone on it if I'm running short of time, but I know that I am doing pretty good on time, so I'm not going to do that. 
And I got a nice email uh, or a message on LinkedIn, um, and it was from the DCU Startup Society. Um, now, they tell me that from the startup week that they actually set up the DCU Startup Society based on the back of that. Now, Roshan has told me it was because of her lectures. Uh, so I don't know if they're playing me or if they're playing her. But anyway, they got themselves up on my slides, so fair play to them for that. Uh, they have 140 members, and then we also have uh, the ESOC uh, Incubator and the Entrepreneur Awards as well. So if you're looking to get involved and engaged in this ecosystem, maybe this is your first time listening to this uh, type of event, this is, this is a good place to start, I think, and it's great. And congratulations to Kotl and the crew for, for getting that set up in the last uh, week or so, I think it was announced. So this is Larry. Classic Larry. Larry was a D is a DCU student, and Larry was our videographer for the event, and he told us that he was allowed to come to our event and do all these videos, and didn't go to class. So, this is what I got in a message the other day. It's, he says, I am a final year student, keep away. It's not you, it's me, it's actually Roisin. So, Larry, if you're here today, you're not involved next year, uh, and for any of the other students, just make sure that you don't tell Roshin that you're going to get involved, which would be great. So, that's it. We're doing it again in October. I hope that you're going to be involved. It'll be great to see you there. Thank you very much for listening to me, and uh, let's see if we can build this community even more. Thank you. Thank you.